Hello, I'm Annabelle Kirkendall with the County of San Diego in the Outreach and Education team at Aging and Independent Services Health and Human Services Agency. And with me is Kathy Holmes Hardy. Kathy, thanks for joining me. Please kindly provide a quick background of yourself. Hi, uh, I am a 69 year old uh, retired county social worker. And since my retirement, I still stayed very active in the community. I volunteer with the East County Action Network, the Senior Resource Center at Grossmont Hospital, and with Meals on Wheels. I'm so glad you could join me today. I do appreciate it. In these unprecedented times, now more than ever, we are relying on technology to provide important information, messaging, and reliable resources in order to continue educating the community and reaching to our older adults. So the purpose of this short video is to highlight specific scams related to COVID-19, otherwise known as coronavirus. It is relevant information. We are all experiencing uncertainty, anxiety, and feeling vulnerable. The goal is not to make people more worried, but to provide you information and helpful tips towards making informed decisions and resisting to pressure to react too quickly. So Kathy, I'd like to know what scams related to coronavirus that you have come across with, whether yourself or from others you have spoken to. Well, in regards to what some of the things I've seen uh, is a huge increase in telephone calls on our landline and the cell phone, and a lot of unknown and strange emails. Uh, some of them referring specifically to the coronavirus now, if I didn't know where they were coming from, if they weren't from a legitimate place, I did not open them. In fact, I did not even, uh, particularly if they had attachments, there's no way I was gonna touch them. But I still worried um, about some of them, even the ones with maybe a good logo being a scam. We need to be careful and we need to stay vigilant. Scammers will take advantage of creating new scams related to coronavirus, including lookalike or posing as official organizations and well-known agencies. Their goal is to trick you and obtain your personal and financial information. They may try to sell you non-existent or useless products and ask for bogus donations. Annabelle, what are some of the real specific current scams that you've seen in the county? treatments, vaccines, test kits, and sanitation supplies, medical equipment, work at home schemes, charity donations, government checks pertaining to social security, for example, or the stimulus checks. The IRS will deposit your economic impact payment, also known as stimulus check, if you're eligible into the direct deposit account you previously provided on your tax return. Otherwise, they will send you a paper check. The IRS will not call and ask to verify your payment details. Do not give out your bank account, debit account, or PayPal account information, even if someone claims it necessary to get your stimulus check. Beware of this scam. If you receive a call, do not engage the scammers or thieves just hang up. If you receive texts or emails claiming that you can get your money faster by sending personal information or clicking on the links, delete them. Do not click on any links in those emails. Reports are also swirling about bogus checks. If you receive a check for an odd amount, especially one with cents, or a check that requires you to verify to check online or by calling a number, it is a fraud. Wow, Annabelle, how do we protect ourselves and find valid and truthful information? Do you have any suggestions? Yes, before I go to those suggestions and tips, I'd also like to um, let you know, and you could share a lot of this to a lot of your friends, family, and anyone who might be needing more information. Scams can come in many ways. You've seen an increased number of emails, phone solicitations earlier. 
those are key things that they're trying to get to us. So phone solicitations, for example, could be a live person calling you or robocalls. Robocalls are also what we refer to as automated phone calls. It's just a machine recording um, doing the phone calling. Another way is to do door-to-door -door solicitations. Now we are home. They know we're home. And what I would advise is just, we don't need to really answer the door, but they are very persistent. So we want to make sure we are being careful. It also could come through emails, text, messaging, and phishing. Phishing is a fraudulent attempt usually made through email to steal your personal information, as well as letters. And then we also have social media which we know right now, there's a lot of great things people are posting and providing services through social media. But we just want to make sure that we're cautious and mindful about a lot of the postings and messages. I just want to uh, also point out that some of the most popular ones out there are Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So first of all, the word free. We know everyone likes that word. And I know our older adults always appreciate getting free things. But now the scammers are going to entice you to get something free. But in reality, it is not. There's so much more strings attached to that. Another way is for them to claim as experts or representatives from organizations such as Center for Disease Control, or what they refer to as CDC, or the World Health Organization, even use their logo and send you a fake letter. Remember to always do fact checking. Contact trusted sources and verify. You can also report scams and file a complaint by getting familiar with the Federal Trade Commission or what we mainly refer to as FTC. That one, you could go ahead and go to ftc.gov slash complaint. To also get familiar with most up-to-date coronavirus scams at the FTC, again, Federal Trade Commission website, you can go to ftc.gov slash coronavirus. They also have resources available in other languages. We also want to use caution when answering the door. I already mentioned to you that door-to-door -door is going to be very convenient for the scammers. We are relying on deliveries and trusted people to drop off meals and necessities so you know who they are or at least have an idea when they're coming. Anyone else, please do not interact nor let them in. Your safety is important. Contact law enforcement if you suspect suspicious individuals or activity in your area. I know you mentioned you're also go, uh, been relying on trying to order online groceries. So this is a perfect example, Kathy, of um, trusted people. And you kind of know exactly when they're coming. So at least you know you're prepared and that someone's coming to your door. And it has worked well, but I used the trusted grocery store and their app that we've always used. So I felt very comfortable. And you're right, they gave me a specific date and time and it, was, it, it lessened my fears. That's great. It's one thing you're already familiar with them, but at least you know their service works, they're reputable. We also want to remind you that we have our district attorney's office. You can report scams to them as well by calling 619-531-3342. Or you can also email Felix Salazar and his address is F-E-L-I-X dot S A L A Z A R at S D C D A dot org. Again, that's Felix dot Salazar at S D C D A dot org. As far as providing personal information over the phone, please be careful and never give any of your information, such as your date of birth, social security number, or bank account if it is an unsolicited call. However, if you initiated the call and wanting to directly connect with a social service agency, for example, and they're requesting personal information for eligibility purposes, then that is okay. 
Have you heard of any other people that have fallen victim for identity theft for providing their personal information, Kathy, by any chance? Not so much in the coronas, but yes, previously, very much so, uh, to the point that they conned them out of $10,000 and never got it back. And someone yes. thought they were talking to somebody who was reputable. And of course, they did the trust routine. At least we know that there are people that can help, such as the Identity Theft Resource Center. But it's good to know that we have reputable organizations and professionals that can help. It's not very easy, but they can help and help you with the process. There's a few more tips I'd like to keep going, just so there's a lot more, but we wanna make sure we provide you some really helpful tips that you can use and remind people. Never open emails and click on links that will allow crooks to access your computer, both personal and financial information, as well as your contacts. Earlier, I mentioned to you about phishing, and this is exactly what it is. If you also want to make a donation or give some kind of contribution, we all know everyone has a lot of financial insecurities right now, but we are a very giving community. Please check with Better Business Bureau at bbb.org and contact the San Diego office at 858-496-2131. You can guess their offices are not accessible right now, but you can leave a message and someone will call you back. Make sure to go to the official websites of reputable organizations to confirm, to confirm and verify before sending your donation. We hope you have found these tips to be helpful. Don't hesitate to reach out for help if you have a question about the legitimacy of a letter, phone call, or email. And if you have been a victim of a scam, please reach out to the district attorney's office for help. Thanks and stay safe.